Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this Mythic Plus guide, I'm going to discuss everything you need to know to improve your damage in Mythic Plus as an Arcane Mage. The Arcane Mythic Plus rotation has nothing to do with the single target one that I showed in my Entourage guide, so hopefully this video will also improve your damage on fights like High Command, Aonar and Hazabel. Quick disclaimer first, if you don't have the legendary shoulders, this video might not be for you, but feel free to check out this guide again once you do obtain them. Let's take a look at the different gear sets. Through the equipment manager you can make and save different kind of gear sets, so that during a mythic plus you can switch between single target and AoE gear. For a single target build I'm using shard with soul of the archmage, and also that tier 22 piece. The reason behind doing so will be explained during the talent section of the guide. As for single target trinkets, Tarnished Sentinel Medallion is still insanely good, combined with any other trinket that I mentioned in my Antorus guide. When taking a look at our AoE gear set, we can play with two different combinations. The first one is my favorite, Mantle of the First Kirin Tor with the Mystic Kilt. I love this build because playing Kilt makes managing your mana a lot easier. The second possible legendary combination is Mantle of the First Kirin Tor with Sefus. This combination is the strongest one for AoE, as Haste is a very good stat for the Arcane Mage. But as you can already guess, this combination requires more mana managing. As for Trinkets, Personal Decimator is great, Signaling Beacon is even better, even for single target, and of course I couldn't forget about Arcano Crystal. Trinkets with either Haste or Versatility are in general good choices for Arcane. A quick recap, for single target we play tier 21 4 piece with tier 22 piece or tier 21 2 piece with tier 22 piece. Just be sure you have that tier 22 piece. For AoE, legendary shoulders with kilt or legendary shoulders with Sefus. Personally I'm a bigger fan of the first option with the kilt. Don't get me wrong, with Sefus you'll have those insane moments where you just blow up the damage meter. However, even I'm still struggling to be consistent throughout the entire dungeon with this combination as it requires a very high skill level. Some handy tips and tricks. Shouldn't you have noticed as a mage we always want to abuse Shard of the Exodar to time warp on every boss pool. Therefore buying drums can be very good if you don't have a shaman and your time warp is on cooldown, or your teammates are crying for time warp but you were a selfish bastard and used it on the previous boss. Drums are also a good choice to time warp two times with the Tyrannical Affix. Activating Sefus as a mage can be done very easy by pressing Frost Nova, a god's blessing for Arcane as you'll be standing in close range anyway. Do be aware that some mobs are immune to lose of control effects, so be sure to also interrupt. I'll put a link in the description to the weak aura that shows time left on Sefus, as also the stated debuff on Sefus as well. Unlike in Raids, using the Talon Shimmer instead of Slipstream is a very good choice in Mythic+. Plus. Using Displacement isn't easy, but nothing can beat for Blinks when you execute it the correct way. I know if you've always played with Slipstream in the past, it will take some time to get used to playing with Shimmer again as an Arcane Mage, especially when you, like me, decide to move during Evocation on a boss fight and realize that you are not talented into Slipstream. Like with all the other Mage Packs, using Spell Steal to your full advantage will make a difference on those higher keys. Like in this video, spell stealing protective light from the Stormforge Sentinel in Halls of Valor. Of course, using Shimmer, Greater Invisibility and Ice Block to mitigate hard hitting abilities will make the healer your best friend. Last tip will be about gear swapping. Thanks to Tarnished Sentinel Medallion being too good on single target, you will probably have to swap it in and out for those boss fights. Which means that it'll have a 30 second cooldown before you can actually use it. So do keep that in mind when you are about to start on a boss. As a mage you can even swap gear in combat by using invis. The 30 second rule obviously applies to any piece of gear that has an unused effect. Different talent builds. Here you see the different talent builds you can use as an arcane mage. I'm only going to go over the talents that do actually impact playstyle. Tier 30. You should really learn to play with shimmer and go for those displacement plays. I know it will be tricky to get used to playing with shimmer if you only played with slipstream, but the choice is still completely up to you. Rune of Power or Encanter's Flow. Arcane is all about bursting down targets, blowing up everything and doing as much damage as possible. That's why Rune of Power is the strongest choice. Now I know that with affixes like Waking and Volcanic, it might seem near impossible to line everything up. But practice makes perfect, even I'm still making mistakes while playing Arcane. Resonance is the only thing we play. When I was discussing gear sets, I showed you guys a gear setup with the tier 22 piece, because the 2 set bonus from the tier 21 makes our presence of mind play like the charged up talent. Last tier is overpowered, only when you're playing double ring for single target, you can also pick temporal flux. 
Our fixes influence our talent choices. Just in general, Mage suffers from a fixes like Volcanic and Quaking because of the movement restrictions. Personally, I find that Arcane has the least amount of problems with these fixes if you play with Shimmer. I can't stress the importance of learning how to use those four blinks to your full advantage. Of course, if you are relatively new to Arcane, then I do suggest that you start by playing with Slipstream and Encanto's Flow on those heavy movement fixes. Then as time passes and you get more familiar with the spec, I do strongly advise to go for Rune of Power and Shimmer. But do be aware that playing Slipstream might not be the best choice with the Quaking affix. As an Arcane Mage, you can counter Quaking very easy by using Arcane Explosion. Rotation and Playstyle Arcane is all about popping huge numbers, literally destroying the damage meter and leaving everyone else far behind. All of these statements are true till some extent. Don't get me wrong, Arcane has his glory moments, where you, like I said, are doing a ridiculous amount of damage. But the really hard part of playing Arcane is trying to be consistent throughout the entire dungeon. Instead of those few moments where you think you're a god because you did 50% of the damage on the trash pack. That's why I'm showing Arcane in a week where the affixes aren't favoring its ability to go hardcore on AoE damage. Like in all Mythic Plus Guide videos, I will show you guys different pieces of footage and I'll comment on the most common scenarios you'll face in a Mythic Plus. Should you have a hard time to see what's going on, I'm using an add-on that shows my cast sequence. First, let's take a look at the AoE rotation. In this clip I use Sefus and Shoulders. Activating Sefus can be done by pressing Frost Nova, put down Rune of Power, Arcane Power and start using Arcane Explosion. Track your Arcane Missile procs and use them to burst down targets. Target swapping is one of Arcane's specialties. In between Arcane Explosions, I use a Arcane Barrage to trigger the Legendary Shoulders. This is the Arcane Orb you see flying to the target. Try to aim this so it hits every target. Per target you hit with the Arcane Orb, you get an Arcane Charge. Arcane Mage is all about planning ahead, so be aware of where your orb is going to fly, as you don't want to be the guy that ninja pulls. Next is the same scenario, but now I'm using Kilt instead of Sefus. This gives us some more freedom with mana and we can spam more abilities. We are still doing the same thing, activating Rune of Power, Arcane Power, spamming Arcane Explosion and using any missile procs to burn down targets. When you do play Arcane long enough, you'll get the feeling of when you should use Arcane Barrage and always use your Arcane Missile procs at 4 Arcane Charges. Unlike during the single target rotation, you do want to use Mark of Lunith during Rune of Power for maximum AoE damage. On huge AoE packs like this, munching some Arcane Missile procs is completely fine. About a single target rotation. The ideal setup is to play it with that tier 22 piece, so we can use Presence of Mind to get 4 Arcane Charges and execute the same rotation as in Antorus, which is Pre-Pod, Pre-Cast, Arcane Blast, Time Warp, 3 Arcane Blasts, Mark of Illuneth, Rune of Power, Arcane Blast, Presence of Mind, Arcane Power and any unused trinkets and go ham on the boss. Arcane Missile procs have priority while Arcane Power and Rune of Power are up. Trying to stay within range of your Rune of Power is by far the most difficult thing you face as an Arcane Mage. So try to make good use of Shimmer and Displacement to get back inside your Rune of Power. As long as you are within 8 yards of your Rune of Power, you should be fine. If you are not familiar with the single target rotation, go check out my Antorus guide for the Arcane Mage, a link should be popping up right now. That's all for this video. All of the weak aura links can be found in the description, as also a link to my UI and add-ons video. Should you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Like this video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.